some recent advances. I would uh, like to request Dr. Yasmina to start her presentation, please. Dr. Yasmina. Hello, everyone. Assalamu alaikum. A very warm welcome to you all. Today, I'm going to discuss about breast ultrasonography, a state of the art of evaluation and some of its recent advances. Firstly, I want to say that I'm very glad that I have been given this opportunity to take part in this webinar through which I can contribute a least small amount in this Breast Awareness Month. As we know that breast cancer is the most common cause of cancer deaths today, coming fifth after lung, stomach, liver, and colon cancers. And it is the most common cause of cancer death in women. The refinement of high frequency technology, particularly with 7.5 to 12 megahertz probe has brought out a totally new facet in ultrasound breast imaging. Now, whom should we perform this ultrasound? The American College of Radiology has given us some guidelines. We can perform it in case of mammographically dense breast, that is the patient that are younger than 30 years or pregnant or lactating state, for evaluation of characterization of palpable breast mass or and other breast related sign or symptom, for evaluation of suspected apparent breast abnormalities detected in other breast imaging. Sorry uh, for the inconvenience. I think I have switched on to the wrong slide. Okay. For evaluation of problems that are associated with breast implants for treatment planning of radiation therapy, for serial follow-up of a non-malignant lesion, and for some in interventional procedures such as FNAC or cyst aspiration. Before moving on to the pathology, I want to give a quick review about the normal breast anatomy in ultrasound. This is an ultrasound image of breast. Here you can see this echogenic line is the skin. This hypoechoic area is the subcutaneous fatty layer. These are the Cooper's ligament that are running through the subcutaneous fat. These are the fibroglandular part, and this is the pectoralis muscle. For evaluation of breast lesion, we should have a clear knowledge about virates. It is a risk assessment and quality assurance tool that is developed by the ACR that provides a widely accepted lexicon and reporting scheme for imaging of the breast. It is applied to mammography, ultrasound, and MRI. It is designed to ensure that the breasts are reported clearly and uniformly. And it also helps to guide the patients, radiologists, and physicians towards that appropriate action. This is the BIDATS category, which starts from zero to six. I'm not going to go into details as our presenter in last webinar and today's webinar has explained it in details and very nicely. In virus category, whenever we get a lesion, we need to describe it under the following criteria. We need to mention the shape of the lesion, the margin of the lesion, orientation, lesion boundary, echogenic pattern, postacoustic features, effect on the surrounding breast parenchyma, some calcifications, and vascularity. And before describing a lesion, we need to always mention the background breast parenchyma whether the breast parenchyma is homogeneously fatty or homogeneously fibroglandular, or it is heterogeneous. Heterogeneous can be both focally or diffusely. In this first image, you can see this is a homogeneously fatty breast. And this one, you can see the uh, ecogenic component is more, that is the it is homogeneously fibroglandular. And this one is mixed, having heterogeneous parenchyma. Now coming to the shape of the lesion. Shape of the lesion can be, it can be oval or it can be rounded like this one, or it can be irregular. Now the margin of the lesion. Margin can be well circumscribed this, like this one, or it can be indistinct like this one, or it, there can be some microlobulations present, or there can be some angulations like this one, or some speculations like this one. Now coming to the orientation of the lesion. 
orientation of the lesion, there can be two types of orientation. The lesion can be wider than taller, or it can be taller than wider. In case of the lesions that are wider than taller, their long axis is parallel to the skin. And in tall, uh, the lesion that are taller than wider, their long axis is perpendicular to the skin. This is very important because we know that the lesions that are wider than taller are mostly benign lesions. And the lesions that are taller than wider are mostly malignant lesions. Now coming to the lesion boundary. There can be an abrupt interface between the lesion and the surrounding bed breast parenchyma. That is, there is no transitional zone or there can be an echogenic rim like this one. Here you can see there is a thin echogenic rim surrounding the lesion and here is a thick echogenic rim surrounding the lesion. Now coming to the echogenic pattern. A lesion can be isoechoic, which can be uh, very difficult to see, or it can be anechoic like this cyst, or it can be echogenic like this lipoma, or it can be hypoechoic like this one, or it can be mixed echogenic having more, both solid and cystic components. Now coming to the post-acoustic shadowing. Post-acoustic feature, there are two types of feature actually, post-acoustic shadowing and enhancement and post-acoustic shadowing. We all get an idea that whenever we get a post-acoustic enhancement, we think that it is a cystic lesion, but this is not always true. I have given you some example. These two are the malignant lesions. In this case, you can see there is a post-acoustic shadowing and this one is producing post-acoustic enhancement. So enhancement doesn't always mean cystic lesion. Very hypercellular tumor can also produce enhancements. Now coming to the effect on surrounding breast tissue. There can be some architectural distortion or there can be some thickening and straightening of the Cooper's ligament like this one. There can be skin thickening or skin retraction. Here you can see the skin is thickened in comparison to the normal side. And here you can see the nipple is retracted. There can be some edema of the surrounding breast parenchyma or there can be some ductal dilatations. If we get a dilated duct, we need to look at the content of the duct, whether there is some inspissated secretion within or whether the duct is packed with tumor cells. Now coming to the calcifications. We can get two types of calcifications. One is microcalcifications and one is macrocalcifications. Microcalcifications gives us a suspicion for malignancy. And macrocalcifications are usually benign. You can find it in macroadenoma, uh, fibroadenomas. But I, I must admit that for evaluation of microcalcification, mammography is better than ultrasound. Now coming to the vasculite of the lesion. As nowadays we have the advantages of using color Doppler, we can always evaluate the vascularity of the lesion. This also helps us to identify the nature of the lesion. You can see there is a cystic lesion and after applying color Doppler, we can see some kind of vascularity in the wall of the lesion. And there you can see an irregular hypoechoic lesion that is giving strong posterior enhancement. Uh, so we became confused whether this is a cystic lesion or whether it is a solid lesion. Then we applied color Doppler and we can see there is a vascularity at the periphery of the lesion and also inside of the lesion. That helps us to uh, confirm that this was a solid lesion, not a cystic one. This table shows some difference between uh, findings between benign and malignant lesion. You all know that very well. I'm not going to go into details about this. Now report organization. When describing a best lesion, how should we write a report? There should be a concise summary of the clinical history of the patient, comparison to the previous ultrasound if available, then analysis of the significant lesion. Before analysis of the lesion, we need to uh, say, tell about the type of the breast, background breast tissue. The lesion size should be mentioned at least in two dimensions, the location of the lesion, in clock face and also distance from the nipple and a clear characterization of abnormal findings. 
then correlation with mammography if available. Then finally, we need to give assessment using bi-rates. And uh, mentioning the bi-rates in breast ultrasound report is a must. Then finally, we'll give the further recommendation. Now, what should be the algorithm for sonographic evaluation? Whenever you get a lesion in the breast, always look for malignant finding. And if you get any, give it to BIRATES category four and five and advise for biopsy. And if there are no malignant findings, just look for the benign findings. And if there are any, give BIRATES category two and three and suggest for follow-up. And if we get a suspicious lesion that we are not sure whether it is the malignant one or benign one, give it under BIRATES category four A or at least BIRATES category three and advise for biopsy because undergoing biopsy is much, much better than nurturing a small tumor, malignant tumor. Now I'll show you some examples of breast lesion along with their bi categories. In this first image, you can see there is an extremely dense breast with heterogeneous matrix that inhibited reliable evaluation. So it was categorized as category zero. Further investigation, help of other investigations are needed to evaluate this breast. In the second image, you can see there's a normal breast tissue having no focal lesion, having no calcifications, no ductal dilatation. So it is a completely normal breast and it is categorized as one. And in this image, you can see there is an oval, smooth, anechoic, simple cyst having posterior enhancement. This is a benign lesion and it is categorized as two. And uh, this lesion, uh, the second picture you can see there is a hyperechoic round lesion having distinct smooth margin, indifferent orientation and mixed shadow that is a characteristic of a complex cyst and it is categorized as category three and short-term follow-up should be given. In this image, you can see there is a small solid hypoechoic lesion having indistinct margin and some spicules are there. Uh, this is a suspicious lesion for malignancy and it is categorized as pirates four and biopsy should be recommended. And there you can see there is a large irregular hypoechoic lesion having speculations that is non-parallel in orientation and having posterior acoustic shadowing. This lesion is highly suggestive of malignancy and categorized as bided spore. And in this case, core needle biopsy followed by surgery should be recommended. Now moving on to some recent advances. Elastography is the one of the recent advancement, advancements of ultrasound. It is a non-invasive technique of imaging stiffness or, or elasticity of the breast tissue by measuring movement or transformation of tissue in response to a small applied pressure or stress. This stress can be applied by the following method, by compression or by shear wave. And the tissue stiffness is measured by Young's modulus expressed in pascals or kilopascals. The harder tissue have a higher Young's modulus than the softer ones. There are more, um, two main types of elastography. One is the strain elastography and the shear wave elastography. This is the strain elastography where the user applies uniform compression at the surface of the body by ultrasound transducer. Here you can see the pressure is applied and there are some deformation of the tissue, underlying tissue and the breast ultrasound scanner displays the induced deformation in the imaging plane. This is a qualitative assessment. And in shear wave ultrasound, you can see the pulse is applied through the transducer to generate a shear wave. This shear wave propagates in, in, a, parallel to, in a parallel to the surface. And the elasticity is measured by the speed of wave propagation. In harder tissue, this wave will propagate faster than the softer tissue, and it provides a quantitative elastic information. 
these are the some uh, normal ranges of breast tissues, uh, Young's modulus ranges of normal breast tissues and some breast lesions. I'm not going to uh, tell you in details. I'm just mentioning that carcinoma, the kilopascal are usually more than 100. Now the role of elastography. The role of elastography is to upgrade a lesion that is categorized in B mode ultrasound or to downgrade a lesion. I will explain it in your in the next slide through some example. Here you can see there is a uh, Byrett's category three lesion in B mode ultrasound. Here is, you can see a small hypoechoic lesion uh, that is oval in shape and there is no enhancement or shadowing. It was uh, uh, categorized as Byrett's 3 in ultrasound, B mode ultrasound. But when elastogram was applied, you can see there is some stiffness at the center of the lesion and also at the periphery of the lesion, showing heterogeneous signal. And kilo Emax was more than 160 kilopascals. So the lesion was then upgraded to category 4 after doing elastogram. And histopathology showed it was an invasive ductal carcinoma. And in the second image, you can see there is a irregular hypoechoic lesion having some spicules in ultra, B mode ultrasound. It was categorized as Byrett spore. But after doing elastogram, you can see there is a homogeneous uh, parenchyma. There's no stiffness seen in the lesion and the Emax was less than 30 kilopascal. So it was downgraded to category three and the histopathology showed nodular adenosis. Another recent advancement is automated breast volume scanner. In this technique, the breast are, uh, images are taken through ultrasound transducer, linear ultra ultrasound transducer and reformated on sagittal transverse and coronal plane that finally reconstructs 3D data sets of the entire breast volume. It overcomes the problem of operator dependency and it gives it reproducible and standardized imaging. It helps in assessing the response of a malignant lesion to neoadjuvant therapy. In this system, measuring the lesion size and distance from the nipple is very easy. And as the exam is reproducible, accurate follow-up is possible. This is an ABVS image. You can see there is a solid irregular hypoechoic lesion. In three dimension, we can see the lesion. It is diagnosed as an invasive ductal cell carcinoma. The lesion measured 2.4 centimeter into two centimeter into 2.1 centimeter. But after four months after receiving the neoadjuvant chemotherapy, you can see the same lesion has reduced remarkably in size and it is well appreciated by ABVS. So we can see that the ABVS has given us the, uh, helps us the, uh, know about the effect of new adjuvant chemotherapy in the lesion. Lastly, I want to say the breast protection is the early detection. And for that, screening is must. And for early detection, combination of mammography and sonography is best. Thank you all. Thank you.